Hello, this is HP Elite Book 840 laptop. I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot and uh, fix the, the motherboard. The laptop currently doesn't turn on. When you try to turn it on, the light um, power indicator just blink for a couple of seconds and then nothing displays. So this, I'm pressing the power button now, you can see there is no response, the system doesn't turn on at all, but when you plug a charger to it, the light, the charging light indicates. So I'm going to plug a charger to it now so that you see what I mean. I plug the charger to it, you can see, let me plug a charger right now, this is the charger for it, I will plug the charger to it and then you see that it doesn't come on only the charging indicator you can see the charging indicator turns on and when you try to power it on it doesn't come on at all this is a motherboard problem i'm going to show you how to troubleshoot and isolate certain parts of um, the certain part of the motherboard so that you know which of them you have to replace and which of them you have to work on so I, I'm going to flip it to the side right now. The first thing I'm going to do to this laptop is to um, drain any static charge. Sometimes it can be static charge inside the power button that can cause the issue. So I'm going to remove the RAM and I'm going to remove um, this is the RAM, right? I'll keep the RAM aside and then I'm going to remove the battery also. This is the battery. To remove the battery, you have to push there's a clip here you have to push down this push this clip to the side for you to be able to unlock the the battery so without pushing this um, lock you keep pushing and pushing at the end of the day you end up damaging the the battery so remember don't forget there is a lock there you have to push one on this side you have to push it down push this one down and then the battery will be able to come out easily so this is the battery it is out I'm going to keep it aside the next thing I'm going to do right now is to remove the heat hard drive this is the hard drive this laptop uses SSD hard drive I'm going to keep it aside and then I will go ahead and drain the static charge on it so i'll just hold it down for a couple of seconds and all the static charge on it is going to drain out that way it will be able to turn on if that is the problem with the laptop in case you haven't done already i would like you to like and subscribe to the channel i have a lo whole lot of videos on how to fix different office equipment from laptops to printers to PBX, intercom, CCTV and all kinds of office equipment scanners and the rest. So if you haven't done so, like and subscribe to the channel so that you will be notified when I, um, when I upload new videos. So I'll hold down the power button of this particular laptop for uh, 30 seconds or more. That way it will drain out all the static charge. So I'm going to plug my charger to it right now and then let's see what happens so this is the charger I'm going to plug it to the laptop and I'm going to try to power it on so let's power it on and see Going to power it on right now. And see, nothing seems to display on the screen, so the static charge issue is not the problem actually. What happens to this system is that the power light, I don't know if you can see, if I power it on, the power light indicator just keeps blinking. That is the only thing it does, but it doesn't come on at all. So the next thing I'm going to do is to clean the RAM. I've cleaned the RAM. I'm going to replace the RAM inside and another slot and try it out again. 
see it doesn't come on after pressing the power button you can see the light indicator just keeps blinking you can see it is blinking just look at the light indicator at the power button you discover that it keeps blinking which means uh, the problem has not been solved yet so I'm going to replace the the battery in the in the laptop and I'll try to I'm going to try to power it on but I doubt if this will be able to solve the problem because um, the problem has to do with the motherboard from what I can see so what I'll do right now is to go ahead and then I'll open up the laptop and then remove the casing get access to the motherboard and then show you how to troubleshoot it so I'm going to remove the battery my RAM and I'm going to take out all the side covers so once more I want to try try it out to see if it comes up the same thing it doesn't come on at all so right now I'm going to take out all the screw on the, the back panel and I'm going to remove the grip the plastic on at the back of this laptop So I'm going to gently take out all the screws one, one, one by one. All of them. And you have to keep all the screws in a safe place. This there's a lot of different screws here. So I'll take out the screws on this end to this end and this end. See, and then the cover is out so I'm going to troubleshoot with my meter now I'm going to check each and every component on on the laptop so in case you haven't done already like and subscribe to the channel i have a whole lot of videos on how to troubleshoot and fix all kinds of laptop problem not only laptop but all kinds of office equipment like printers and pabs intercom cctv uh, and of course laptop scanners also so uh, i'm going to with my multimeter now i'll be checking some parts of the laptop so i'll check the the power switch of the laptop just to confirm that everything is okay but the power switch of the laptop so when i plug in the the charger i'm supposed to get at least 19.5 volt because that is a battery rating of that is a voltage rating of of the adapter so it should read 19.5 volt when i plug it when i test it you can see it's reading 19.5 volt which means that uh, the jack the the power jack is supplying the right voltage which means that the the adapter is okay also so this is the the heat sink on the on the processor i've removed it and um, you, you, you need to know that um, this particular laptop Elite Book 840 uses onboard processor which means you can't replace the processor that is easily you can't replace the processor easily if you have to replace the processor you have to go through the long process of um, using a, a workstation to to remove the the processor So I want to check if uh, 
this voltage on the fan to see if the if the power is being supplied on the motherboard so that is why i'm taking the voltage reading of the cooling fan but from what i can see so far i think voltage is being supplied to to the cooling fan so that is not the issue that area has been isolated So I'm going to take a voltage reading of this, uh, the battery, you can see the battery terminals are receiving power. So power comes into the motherboard, power comes in, into the motherboard. You can see that I've been able to test, first of all, I tested the power jack and then there is voltage on it and I tested the, the cooling fan, the cooling fan terminal. That is voltage and the next thing I did was to test the battery terminal if voltage is coming to it and then power is coming to to the motherboard so from what I can see I think the motherboard has an a, a problem so I'll continue troubleshooting and then what I want to do right now is to detach the display cable that is the signal cable coming from the screen. I want to remove the motherboard so that I can get, um, I can look at the, the other side of the motherboard to confirm that everything is good on the other side. Because from this end, all the components seem to be intact and working fine. But at the flip, at the other end of the motherboard, the components there also. I just want to make sure that no part of the mother, um, no part of the component is burnt in any way. No fuse or no chip on it is burnt in any way. So I'm going to gently remove this screw so that I can be able to remove, take out the motherboard easily. And just like uh, an advice here, when removing the motherboard, you have to be as gentle and as careful as possible. We have different components on on the, on the motherboard and then the motherboard is pretty expensive. So you have to be very careful when dealing with it. You can see how careful I am. I'm, I'm trying to make sure that no component is holding it down. I don't want to pull it with force and then pull out a, any cable and cut any component or damage any component on it. Okay, the motherboard is out, so I'm going to check uh, the other end of the motherboard.
okay so this is the other end of the motherboard i'm talking to you about you can see there are a lot of components here a lot of components here and i have to check them one by one to be sure carefully um, inspect them to be sure that no part is burnt damaged in any way if i discover a burnt part what the logical thing to do is to the logical thing to do is to replace that particular component there, there are a lot of uh, stores online that sells components you can just google uh, them and then you buy from them but for me here in this part of the country i, I know some a couple of places where I can go and I'll be able to get the parts. So I have been able to inspect them um, the other end of the the laptop and everything there appears to 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 be fine everything that appears to be fine so i am going to fix in the the cooling fan right now and try to power it on without the panel i'll power it on power on the laptop outside the panel to see if if it um, if the fan spins if the fan spins that means there is something on on the panel that is shutting it out and i'm going to just take care of that if you haven't done so remember to like and subscribe to the channel i have a lot, whole lot of videos on how to troubleshoot and fix different components of 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 a, of a motherboard so from what i've been able to um the code on this i think the processor is is bad and this is an onboard processor which means i am going to have to replace the processor on on the board but first of all i must confirm availability of this processor first i must get a board where i can be able to transfer the processor from a good board that has another problem probably another problem aside processor i'll just transfer the processor to this particular motherboard and then i'm going to solve the problem and then if you want to know how to transfer uh, the processor of any mother in on board uh, motherboard just then um, check my other videos and see if um, there's a video there if not i'm going to do a video later in future on how to transfer processor thank you